Hi, it's Dr. Christine Sauer with DocChristine.com and today I am very happy to have my cooperation partner Erin Madden here. Hi Erin. Hey everyone. Erin is a Bachelor of Health and Sciences and Applied Nutrition, mm -hmm. a health coach, a meal plan specialist and she's a cooking and recipe expert. And today mm -hmm. Of course, what else do we want to talk about? The summer's coming up, we are thinking of the beach and want to get rid of the bulge before the beach body and get our beach body. So we are talking mm. about diet. Absolutely. Christine, what diet do you think I should go on? I'm trying to lose all this belly fat and I'm, I'm tr I, I want to slim down and I, I want to look like the next Jillian Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> Jillian Michaels, I don't know her, but I would like to swim down too. So what should we do? There's different options. For one, I don't like the word diet. Mm. Although diet comes from the Greek word dietas and really means lifestyle, nowadays it has come to mean a restriction and deprivation. Mm. When you think, oh, I'm going on a diet. I Absolutely. can't eat anything. Mm. I starve myself. I have to eat awful food like broccoli and Brussels sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> drink nothing but water yeah, <laughs> all day yuck. long. So, How can you drink yeah, water? <laughs> yeah, I know. So, hey, you'll lose the weight, but is it sustainable? <laughs> That's the problem. And there's more than a hundred diets out there. There's more. a new diet every month, um, especially as we get closer to the summer. There's always some celebrity promoting mm -hmm. some some fancy diet with like buzzwords all over the, the media. banana diet, yes. the grapefruit diet, the cabbage diet, the chocolate diet. I know that sounds good. <laughs> What's involved in that one? <laughs> eat nothing but chocolate. I, I like that one. So you will I, lose weight if you eat nothing but chocolate, but I, not in a healthy way. I actually read that there's a diet called the cookie diet so that I, I think that one might be up my alley too so um, I think we have the hair raising diet <laughs> but now, the, what 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 diets really make sense and mm. there's a few that have lasted longer than the others and make more sense mm. now, the Mediterranean diet now we all know about it what does it mean Basically, Mediterranean diet, you're getting a lot of healthy fats. Um, it's one of the best diets out there because it promotes healthy eating and also it's been proven to increase longevity. Mm -hmm. um, so you're um, basically eating a lot of salads, a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables, a lot of um, um, nuts and seeds, and there's tons of omega-3s in the diet, which Fish, is yeah. great stuff. Mm -hmm. and interestingly the mediterranean diet does not mean pizza and pasta every day no <laughs> <laughs> now then we had the low fat diet that is slowly getting out of uh, fa fashion because it has been proven not to work mm. or not to work for long low fat was originally thought to make sense because years ago 30 40 years ago we had the notion that calories in has to equal calories out and all calories are made equal and you just have to eat less and exercise more and since fat i think has more calories nine calories per mm. gram fat than protein and carbs only four grams they thought calories they thought well reduce the calories tell them to exercise more and they'll yeah. lose weight. Absolutely, but when the low fat craze came out, a lot of companies were putting all these low fat um, products out there and they were I know being what's loaded. low fat. Sugar is low fat. Yeah, no sh fat in sugar. Absolutely. Give me sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happens. All the breakfast mm. cereals were invented then. Yeah. And uh, the added sugar is amazing. Absolutely, and because that you're actually taking away the fat, sugar um, is actually um, the main culprit for weight gain. Because when you cra um, every time when you eat sugar, you're actually going to crave more of it. So fats, in a way, can actually help suppress your appetite because it is more calorie dense. It's going to help maintain your blood sugar levels. It's going to help keep you fuller for a lot period of time, and that's what's going to help keep your calories down. Sugar, on the other hand, does the complete opposite it's highly addictive yeah. and <laughs> and um, every time when you uh, 
you crave something that is low fat, you're actually good. You might actually notice that you're going to um, feel like you're hungrier, like after an hour of eating that. Yeah. Mm. And it has been proven that people, even those that lose weight on the low fat diet, they 98.9% gain it back yeah, I know. and then some won. And let's talk about some things that fat is good for. We need fat for helping to provide insulation, but another important thing is that uh, we need fat to help me, uh, metabolize our fat-soluble vitamins. So vitamin A, D, E, and K all need fat to be absorbed correctly. Um, and you know, vi vitamin A is good for our eyesight and an antioxidant. Vitamin K helps with blood clotting. Vitamin D helps with our immune system system and hormones so you know we can't neglect our vitamins that like that need fat in order to I always think it's very interesting to know that there's essential fatty acids mm. there's essential amino acids which is protein all, but there's no essential carbs that is true absolutely the body can make all the sugar it needs itself yes and it can use fats to produce sugar or protein to make sugar. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's where the low carb diet came along, mm. which is actually more sustainable. Yes, definitely. So what do you eat on a low carb diet? Well, there is salads. That's exciting, right? <laughs> I, I, I love eating I love a thing. salad, but not... <laughs> three times a day. <laughs> no, low carb, there's actually quite a bit of options for you. And there's so many good recipes out there to actually be so creative with low carb foods. You can eat uh, fish, you can eat protein, you can eat um, nuts and seeds, you can eat healthy fat, um, uh, olive oil and all your other vegetable oil, coconut oil, um, all your vegetables. You can eat fruit in moderation. So mm -hmm. um, certain fruits uh, like berries actually have lower amounts of sugar than um, bananas and watermelons as they tend to be higher in sugars so you um, like you can certainly follow a low carb um, diet as long as you are like st um, keeping your um, your sugars w uh, well in check so mm -hmm. like you can certainly um, uh, eat lots of fatty food fish and you know you can certainly eat bacon but that's kind of like one of the the worst kinds of fats to incorporate into your diet so you always want if, if the bacon is from pigs that had a happy life yeah, I don't think it's so bad <laughs> the same as grass-fed beef mm. or uh, pastured poultry eat the fat absolutely eat the yolks in the eggs if ideally the eggs should be from pasture chicken Definitely. that are out running around enjoying the grass the herbs the bugs the the sunlight that tastes very different Definitely. but if you can get them regular eggs omega-3 eggs are the second best choice mm. so and incorporating lots of omega-3s into your diet is going to really help promote mm. weight loss and also protect your brain as Absolutely. well as your eyesight uh, it's good for our skin too so if you get dry skin if you're still kind of feeling the effects of winter and your skin still dry upping your omega-3 can really mm. help promote hydration um, as well as keeping your joints lubricated so omega-3s are essentially critical for athletes as well um, because it's going to help uh, reduce inflammations in their body and it's good for heart health Absolutely. for all aspects and mm. if you ever have a question if you should take an omega-3 supplement or not because too much omega-3 is also not good mm. because we need uh, the inflammation in the body sometimes for example to fight off a virus yeah definitely but the normal inflammation down regulates itself after it's done so if you want to know whether you should take a supplement i recommend taking an omega-3 index test and uh, we supply that if you want to just uh, let us know it's not that expensive and it is very very interesting how many people actually have a bad omega 3 6 ratio yeah definitely and with the world now everything is so processed everyone is eating oat we actually get more omega 6s in our diet than omega 3 and too much of those is is the reason why there's heart attack increases and diabetes and all the other conditions that are linked mm. to heart disease um, and weight gain so we always want to make sure that we're getting um, healthy Healthy fats from whole soup food sources like our nuts or seeds uh, with very minimal process yeah the less processed the better and the cheap vegetable oils are actually highly processed mm. contain lots of toxins mm. that's another factor if you eat a higher fat lower carb diet it helps the body eliminate fat soluble toxins 
Because if you want to lose weight, what happens, the body stores uh, toxins, fat soluble toxins in your fatty tissue. And it's actually proven that in the last 50 years, the percentage of uh, uh, organophosphates and other fat soluble toxins in fat tissue have increased dramatically. They actually measured that for about 30 years. Every year they measured in people that had some fatty tissue removed. They took it and measured it. And then 1979, they stopped. And so many toxins have been introduced and there have been no studies done if it's still increasing and diabetes. And many people that lose weight can't lose it. They are so overloaded with toxins. So mm -hmm. you have to make sure that Whatever diet you follow, you have to support the detoxification organs, which means a lot of good vegetables, yeah. fruits, green, green uh, leaf, Absolutely, and yeah. polyphenols, and all the goodies. Mm. Very uh, important and fiber to get the stool going and get it out of here. <laughs> yeah, and that's so important. When you are increasing your fat intake, you also need to make sure you're increasing your fiber intake because people who are on low carb diets tend to not eat enough uh, fiber. Um, and it's so important to make sure you're getting enough vegetables and um, some, some fruit into your diet to make sure you're able to have regular bowel movements because uh, that's why there's so much press out on the media is that um, a lot of health experts um, strongly advise not to go on low carb diets um, mm. because that um, they do feel like you are missing a lot of whole grains and a lot of these other essential yeah. vitamins and minerals um, that help promote healthy bowel movement mm. but you can certainly go on a low carb diet as long as you're um, having mm -hmm. have eating um, healthy and making sh and getting regular bowel movements <laughs> absolutely yeah. and a low carb diet is not the same as a ketogenic diet mm. what's the difference the ketogenic diet is where ketones are being produced in the body from a reduction in carbohydrates. The fat content is generally about 60 to 75% fat and carbohydrates is generally about five, less than about 5%. So some people eat under 20 grams of carbohydrates per day. Um, so when um, uh, your body is no longer utilizing carbohydrates as a source of fuel because that's what the body really uh, wants to do is use carbohydrates as your energy source when that's been um, being stripped away that signals your body to trigger ketones in the body to make your body burn more fat cells and not um, and not burn carbohydrates um, when your carbs are, are being used as fat it's a way to some people can um, see a lot of good weight loss results mm. from from keto yeah, the body really has two modes of using energy for immediate supply like if you run from a tiger mm. they use sugar and glycogen yes. storage in the liver mm. and when you are no longer running but you do a marathon you need sustained energy and your glycogen doesn't last longer than 24 to 36 hours mm. and then we use the energy we stored before in fat and the body makes out of fat when it breaks it down ketone bodies and actually a little bit of sugar too to keep your blood sugar stable because there's a lot of myths about when you don't eat as much carbs your blood sugar is plummeting you feel lousy it's all not true yeah. but those are out there yeah and it's it's important to know that our body is from history from the paleolithic mm. age and the mm. paleo diet is yeah. famous too for the for, uh, that we are made to eat when there's something there, feast, have the whole deer when we had one, eat all the nice apples on the tree that are available because we couldn't store them. And then after a while we didn't have nothing to eat. Mm. And so that's a famous diet now too, which is really not a diet but a lifestyle. And it's called intermittent fasting or fasting. And really it's just a thousand year old practice that people are made to do. Yeah. Because years ago when we had food, we ate. When we don't have food, we fasted. And it sounds like starvation, but it's very different for us now, because for us, starving means that it's involuntary. Somebody puts you in 
a black hole with no food, nothing. Then you are starving it, and that's not good. Mm. But if you're fasting, you choose not to eat for a while, like our ancestors. And that's actually very good for health and the health benefits, we'll talk about that later more, but it's fascinating. It absolutely is. And uh, if anybody wants to go deeper, there's good books about it by Dr. Jason Fung, The Obesity Code or The Complete Book on Fasting, which has a lot of the theory in it. It's, it's, it's very good. Mm -hmm. And I also like by Dr. Marcola, Keto Fast and Fight for Fuel. Those are two good books too. Then we have, of course, the gluten-free and or dairy-free craze, I call mm, it. Yes. What 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 what's that supposed to do? Well, there basically gluten free is there is all this press out there that gluten free causes weight gain, it causes belly bloat. It's very popular in a lot of like holistic society, um, and um, so people were basically eliminating anything that was gluten free and it's gluten containing. Yeah. Gluten They're containing. Eliminating yes, everything yes. that has gluten. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and what is that? And, and basically, gluten is from a protein in wheat, and um, so it's people think that it's highly processed, and it we shouldn't our bodies shouldn't di be able to digest our gluten. Which is not the case. Um, gluten free is better for individuals that actually have an underlying sensitivity um, with gluten. So there are people that can actually digest gluten with no issues at all. People that can't digest gluten would have constipation or even diarrhea. They would have a lot of digestive complaints. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not something that um, if you heard about gluten is bad for you, there's like so much like information out on there. As long as like if you feel fine on gluten, then certainly eat your gluten, eat your muffin. That's completely fine. <laughs> well, I think it's important also to note that all those diets really do not focus on the quality of Absolutely. food. Absolutely. And that is so important. And if you want to know what I mean with that, I wrote a little book, Eating for Vibrant Health and Explosive Energy, where I focus on the food quality. Yeah, definitely. Because it is so important, because there's a lot of gluten-free junk. Even if you're celiac and have to avoid gluten, many of those eat gluten-free junk because mm. for example sugar is gluten-free absolutely i can so, go to the store and get a bag of swedish berries and that would be considered gluten-free <laughs> yeah. most chocolates uh, everything candy is mm. gluten-free yeah now that's junk you should not eat it because yeah. it's highly processed and the basic rule for foods to eat is always if it grows in the mm. soil if it comes from animals that ate it from the soil you can eat it. Definitely. If it's made in a factory, comes in a box and has a hundred ingredients that you can pronounce, maybe you should better avoid it. Definitely. So weight loss is complex. You just be you just can't be following um, a diet that's um, highly marketed, especially when there's celebrities involved, because yeah. they're there just to make money. So they're not. They half the time they don't have your own health in, um, in your best interest. The best thing for you is to do is to talk to a professional that has experience in many nutrition protocols, and um, to actually come up with a nutrition protocol that fits fits your lifestyle. In order to lose weight, in all um, you have to reduce the number of calories that you consume in the day and also eat whole nutrient dense food there's right. no one there's no product out on the market and no special food like apple cider vinegar is a huge um is a huge weight loss marketing product yeah. and all apple cider is good for is on salads but use it as salad dressing don't um, assume that you're going to be drinking two teaspoons of that a day and you're going to be and the and fat will be melted off well, the fat will <laughs> melt off if you're not eating anything else Ab absolutely and that's <laughs> and, and apple cider vinegar or regular vinegar is good for people with low stomach acid absolutely. which are a lot of older people that have acid reflux have low stomach acid and if you want them uh, a little paper how to do that contact us and uh, I'll give you a paper how you can easily test your stomach acid at home for free you don't have to pay for expensive stuff mm. but when somebody when you're not sure what to eat I highly recommend you contact as you said a nutrition professional like us and Erin makes amazing meal plans that are individual meal yep. plans too that really 
go with what works for you. And that's very important. If your neighbor is following a keto diet and you don't like the idea of cutting out bread and, and fruit and maybe pizza, then, you know, keto is just probably not going to mm. work for you and you'll probably just lose interest after a couple weeks. So it's very important to find a nutrition protocol that's going to work in the long term and not just short term. If you're thinking about short term, you're not going to see long lasting results because you're, you're uh, once you come off of any weight loss program, you're going to gain all the weight back because you never actually learned how to eat long term. Right, and mm. that is very important and that's why the word diet rings bad in mm. my mouth because diet means after you're done with the diet, you eat normally. Yeah, That's nonsense. You need to develop a lifestyle, an eating style that works for you for the rest of your life and combine it with a suitable exercise, which exercise is nothing strenuous that you hate. You need to find something that's fun. Mm. Ideally, that helps you deal with stress, like yoga or Tai Chi. Tai Chi is my favorite. Yeah. And uh, uh, that at the same time strengthens the muscles, increases the balance. And you have to look after neuroplasticity. You have to work yeah. with your brain to keep yeah. it healthy. You're too young. You don't, your brain is <laughs> functioning 100% hopefully and often it's no longer the case because of all the processed food but uh, a protocol for example of intermittent fasting is very convenient for many people and mm. they lose weight and they can actually continue to do that for the rest of their life because it allows a day of feast say you're invited with your friends and you don't want to stand on the sideline and say oh yeah you are all having pizza and beer and I have to eat a uh, salad or nothing that's no fun you you want to have social occasions yeah. you want to go to the wedding and eat a piece of wedding cake yeah. and you want to go into a nutrition protocol think um, and allow yourself a little bit of freedom like mm. Christine said it's not going to be healthy if you're just going to be um, very focused on losing the weight um, I have clients every week that go out every Friday or Saturday night and they have a pizza and a beer and they go back on program the next day and they're still losing weight so yes. give yourself a little bit of freedom it's not, like having a slice of pizza or maybe like some Chinese food is not going to set you off you might at most retain some water but it really takes a lot for the body to actually gain mm -hmm. like one pound of fat each week and it's so important to look at a weight reduction protocol and um, think about yourself think about like i'm making lifestyle changes and not coming to someone and say well how much weight can i lose on this program mm -hmm. <laughs> you and how all, fast can yeah. i lose 10 pounds yeah. in 10 days you can can you keep it off on the long run yes yeah. you can mm -hmm. but only when you continue a, a sensible protocol and that's why i'm so yeah. excited that Aaron and i partnered with our what I call the body, mind and spirit mm, transformation yeah. program, which is a cool weight loss program. It works amazingly. It's conveniently online in our time with the viruses flying around. Mm. Uh, it helps to be able to do it from home and it involves the whole family. It's a long term program. It's made to last long and it works amazingly. So check it out on our website. The link is below and uh, I'm, I'm very excited about it and uh, it really is diet independent because it's a lifestyle program and you will never lose weight if your goal is just to get the bikini body in the summer because you need to know why really you want to lose weight. Yeah. So those parts are all part of the program and the course that comes with it and the meal plans that, mm. that come with it. And we actually have uh, uh, support for you to choose a uh, eating style or lifestyle that's right for you. Because it's difficult when you're out on the road all the mm. time. What do you eat when you go, when you're, you're fast, you want to go to McDonald's. Yeah. What do you eat? So, Aaron knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I still eat my bacon. No, what do I eat? Uh, I forgot. My brain! <laughs> I need to go on a protocol. I know I do. Next one starts in April. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that's it for, day, for today about diets. Don't go on a diet. Adopt a healthy lifestyle program. And if you want help with that, contact us and we'll happy to help you on the way.
See you later. <laughs> See you later. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.